this thing had followed us back to our, our tent and he was waiting for us right there. And at the time as we're mocking this thing, it opens up with another vocalization right by my head. The only thing that's separating me from this, from this being is a thin piece of nylon and that's it. My name's Michael Shepard. Everybody calls me Shep. I'm a native here in Utah. Absolutely love this state. I've uh, lived here all my life. Um, I'm kind of an, an, an explorer in some ways. I've had the opportunity to, to travel and really experience the United States and a lot of what, what this country has to offer. Um, I'm a working professional. Uh, my wife and I actually, we have children. They're, all, they're almost all grown up, but my wife and I actually own property in central Utah and we're building an off the grid uh, cabin, self-sustaining cabin, and that we're gonna be moving down there over the next few years. Love the outdoors, love hiking. Um, love everything that has the, the outdoors and nature has to offer. I've been studying and working with the, uh, in the mystery and the phenomenon, whether it be Sasquatch, for the, the greater part of almost 20 years now. When I was little, I lived in, uh, in a home where some weird things happened, some odd stuff occurred when, we were, when I was younger. Um, as I got older, I was in a relationship with, a, with an individual, with a person, and uh, we lived in a very, very, um, peculiar house uh, where we had uh, we had some 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 stuff right out of the uh, the conjuring occurring for many years um, we we it, it ultimately drove us out of the house no matter what we did we we tried many things to make the phenomenon not occur but it discontinued it was uh, very interesting and so we eventually we left that house from that point on I went through a a pretty uh, dramatic life change in terms of um, some events in my life that made me kind of question everything that I'd gone through up, up until that point. And so after that, that event, um, I started really on looking, wholeheartedly looking at, at my, all of everything, who I am, you know, where I fall into all of this. And ultimately it did bring me to, you know, the paranormal lines to specifically Sasquatch which sounds weird to say, but it, it, it was, it's almost like all the roads led there, if that makes any sense. Honestly, um, what really led me to Sasquatch, it, it was like a pole. I, 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 can't, I can't quantify it, I can't describe it, but internally it felt like something has, all my life has pulled me in that direction. Um, not only to like, in regards to the physical phenomenon, but to some of the other aspects of what occurs around around the Sasquatch, um, the beings of the phenomenon that. But once once you get a taste as well, like once you have a real experience, um, then it it always it kind of seems to me that in some way, shape, or form, once you're in it, you're in it. And I don't know why, but once after I had my first experiences direct experience with Sasquatch, it became an obsession um, over everything else that I'd been looking into over the years. But it literally, it is, it is my main focus of what I research. Um, there's not one day that goes by that I don't listen to a, an experience or story or look into the phenomenon. It was in, I think 2014, I'm thinking 2014, if I remember right. It, uh, at a ranch near Trout Lake, Washington, near Mount Adams. Um, this place, I, I don't know if you guys want me to say the name because it's not affiliated with this, but there's a ranch out there um, owned by a gentleman by the name of James Gillian, and he owns a ranch called e Seti. Again, some weird synchronicities around, these, the, around the ranch that pulled, us, that pulled me there. At the time, my, our, my wife and I, our oldest daughter, graduated high school. And so my wife took her to Hawaii as a vacation. And the other kids and I were like, well, you're going on vacation, we're going on vacation. And so just some weird, odd synchronicities um, had occurred and I found and learned about East City um, a few weeks before we started planning this vacation. Uh, we get out there, it's June, the beginning of June. Um, beautiful, uh, we, we were able to book some camping accommodations out there. It was myself, my sister and our, my kids. 
And uh, the, my sole intent, a few days before we had actually arrived and we actually gone to East SETI, I'd been listening to a, a podcast, Fade to Black, with Jimmy Church. And he had James on, and they had been doing shows and, and that from East SETI. And so um, they had talked about how these children had, had found these massive Sasquatch prints at, at East SETI. And so this was just like a week or two before we, we, we were able to attend. And so I get to East SETI and we, we, we check in and that, and great, the people there are, are fantastic. They really are accommodating. They really um, are hospitable. They asked us specifically, what are you looking for? And at that time, like I told them, I, I, for the most part, the last thing that I really like at, on my checklist is I want to experience, I want to experience a Sasquatch. I want to have a really good ex experience with Sasquatch. And so, um, lovingly enough, they and luckily enough, they told us exactly where the Sasquatch were in relation to the to the ranch. And matter of fact, a few days before, they actually had a Sasquatch walk through the main camp in front of full view, in front of everyone. Um, while, while everybody was eating dinner and it literally went and uh, picked like fruit from a tree and then walked back right if there was at the time they said there was a um, an older one which was white and then a younger one then they were both male they instructed us where it was on the property and they instructed us hey go over into this area um, they love organic fruit and we'd stopped at the store and bought some organic fruit leave an offering kind of Say out loud that you're interested in in, uh, in in having an experience, and they'll uh, they'll they'll accommodate. So um, the the we we were there for three or four days. The day before, the last day that we were there, that we were about to, we were going to leave. Um, we did a night vigil where um, at East SETI they have other phenomena that, that occur. Um, and so we were watching and partaking of the other phenomenon, and it, it got very, very late. And um, we decided that we wanted to go on a hike and hike a long way around the ranch and then go to our camp spot. Um, it just so happened that the last stretch of, of the hike was, was the specific area where they had told us the Sasquatch had, had been. Um, now it, everybody's asleep. It's about one, two o'clock in the morning. It was my my sister, myself, and my um, my stepson, who's my youngest, and my oldest, my my daughter, my oldest daughter. Um, we were hiking. We were we we just rounded the bend where um, where the the phenomenon occurs, and my my sister stops. She's taking pictures of of a field out there where. Um, they, they say, like James says, that there are portals and different things, and um, she's taking pictures because, you know, the phenomenon that, that occurs out there. Got some wild pictures, and I'd, I'd love to show you, of things that shouldn't exist. Anyways, um, we, as we proceed to walk a little bit, my sister stops, and she, she says out loud, what you came for, what you were here for, it's just right up ahead of you. And I didn't I thought she was. I thought she was pulling my leg. Didn't believe her. I just at the time I thought, oh, you're just. This is. You're just being weird. Um, myself and my daughter, we walk about ten feet further. Um, basically, by the trail, there's a wood line with a little creek that runs through the property, and uh, there's a massive wood line. So the the trail basically uh, borders the the wood line of the creek. And I'm about probably about a hundred feet from that that curve, and then the 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 the, uh, the trail. I walk ten feet towards me and my daughter. We walk ten feet towards that towards the uh, the wood line, and out of the woods comes the. I can't even I can't describe what it is. It's everything you've ever if you've ever watched any Sasquatch program, if you've ever if you've ever like heard the Ohio howl, if you've ever heard. Cut that thing comes that that sound that roar the I don't even know what to say what it is it's not a scream it's not it has a scream in it but it has like it sounds like a, a T Rex and something out of Jurassic Park meets meets 
a, a, a male screaming, but also at the same time a female screaming, and it and that thing it, it goes off for thirty maybe thirty seconds, and it's vibrating our internal organs. It stopped me dead in my tracks. Now at that time it stopped. It went after it stopped. My initial reaction was, well, well I'm insane, so I'm going to go I'm going to go chase this thing, right? And so I took off running in the direction of the tree line. And uh, <clears throat> little did I know, my 10-year-old daughter, she was, she was running with me. And at the time, I didn't register until I get right up to the edge of the wood line. And then I noticed she's there. And, and then the instinct of the dad, the protector, kicks in, right? Like, what are you doing, you idiot? Like, your daughter is about to experience something that, that makes grown people cry, right? that puts people into a panic, that you know their entire lives are ruined because of this. Um, so I get to the wood line and I stopped. I, my intent was to go into the woods and to go get, to, to go experience and to go have a face-to-face -face encounter. Just out of the fact that, that honestly, what this, what, this, what this is, I need to see what this is. This is the whole reason why I was there. This is the whole reason why I've dedicated a decade of my life at that time to, to looking into this, this is every person that ever told me I'm insane. This is every, I need to see this with my own eyes because at, this, is the, this is basically me giving, uh, well, me getting the confirmation, right? That, that everything that, that people tell you that is real is nothing but a lie, right? The main narrative, the, the you know, this is it. This is the reason why I'm here. Um, so I stopped, <coughs> just do out of, with my daughter, and at the time I had a small, small flashlight that was like that large from Walmart. You get them for like five bucks. Not very proud of not not very proud of the fact I didn't have my bigger ones at the time. But and I start going, I start scanning the the wood line, um, and I'm looking because I want to see this thing so bad. I want to. I mean, this is it. You know, this is the moment I've been waiting for. This is this is everything. Um, sadly, I didn't get a look at it at that time. What happens is, as we're scanning, because it, it, it went silent, and everything was silent still, but as we're scanning, and we're looking through the, 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 with the flashlights through the forest, we, sound, we hear what sounds like a tank on two legs just burst through the trees and just run off in the distance. And you could hear, you could feel this thing on the ground, you could hear this thing destroying every tree, every branch, obliterate like the forest as it's running so we I, we kind of take a breath you know because that's pretty we've been through a, an intense experience my sister and my stepson did not join me when when i was running towards the phenomenon that could potentially end your life and mutilate you in multiple different ways right um so they finally joined us and we're we we're kind of decompressing going did we just experience what we experienced that was wild like that was what that was legit that was it without having a face-to-face -face sighting without seeing it with with our, with our eyes everything happened right and so we we decide we're going we're going to head back to camp now this is where the this story gets really interesting because little did we know this thing had circled back around and it was following us we had no idea at the time it knew where we were camped so we're we're um <laughs> we were when we got back to the camp, we started we doing our night, nightly ritual, brushing our teeth, right? And we start joking, we start mocking like the, this Sasquatch, because at that time, like there were, um, they were making calls which sounded like cows, but they were the worst imitation of a cow you could ever hear. Um, and they were off in the distance, there were coyotes howling off, and then there were these weird cows, right? And it sounded like an 800 pound cow. Like, well, I'm sure a cow's 800 pounds, but an eight pound, 800 pound man imitating a cow. And so we're, we're brushing our teeth, we're doing that, and we're making fun of it, right? I'm, uh, I'm sitting against the tent. Now, we're, we're in the woods, we're in the, we're in the woods, and just a little bit off the tent, there's, a, there's the creek that I told you about. Little did I know this thing had followed us back to our, our tent, and he was waiting for us right there. And at the time as we're mocking this thing, it opens up with another vocalization right by my head. The only thing that's separating me from this, from this being is a thin piece of nylon, and that's it. What it did 
is, and this is going to sound so funny when I say this, but this matches other experiences. Now, there are certain parts of experiences that, it, that you keep to yourself, right? And I use that as a way to tell if other people are telling the truth. When it vocalized, it impersonated an owl. And this thing, it literally, it said the words hoot. Like, but what it did was it, it didn't say just, it used every, like, every vocal capability that it had to do that right in my face. And at that moment, like, it, it was literally right by my face. And um, at that, like, we all went white. Instantaneously, we shut up. The, the mocking was done. We all basically just, we were white as ghosts. We, and we sat there in silence for, for probably five minutes. The, the, the little kids were in tears. Because it's, it's terrible, right? Like, this thing was right next to us. And we, we finally get composure. We finally go to bed. And my, my younger children, they had fallen asleep. Um, and a couple hours after I'd gotten uh, to sleep, like an hour or two after, my, my youngest daughter, she wakes me up. And she's shaken. She's terrified. And I'm holding her. And the reason why she's terrified is these things are all over the place screaming. They're doing the screams in the middle of the night. It's like you hear the Ohio howl. They're doing that, but it's close. And they're... I, earlier I told you about the coyotes. It sounds like they are killing and hunting those coyotes. It sounds like they are absolutely murdering these things, right? And so um, I, I told my daughter, we're fine. I'm lying through my teeth, right? Because what are you supposed to tell a, a, a six-year-old at that time, right? What are you supposed to tell a seven-year-old? Oh, no, there's, there's an 800-pound mythological beast that, that every little evil will tell you out in the woods killing these things. And most likely, if they come over here, it's going to terrify you. It's going to scar you for life. You don't say that to that child. You tell them everything's okay. So I calm her down, get back to sleep. Um, and I, I ended up taking a, a, a sleeping pill to tell me go back to bed because I'll be completely frank and honest. While I was laying there alone, I had the impression that uh, almost in a way that it was, it was like it was impressing on me that, hey, if you want to see us, we'll come. And I regret this to. Like, I regret this wholeheartedly. But, I, but in my head, I said, I'm not ready. And they gave me the image of, because with the tent, you know, we had a clear roof, so we could see the, see the stars and that. But in my head, like, they gave me the impression, like, that they would come and, like, come and lean over the tent so, they could, so I could see them. I, I didn't do it. I was terrified. I was terrified. I was terrified at that time, just, just due to the fact that everything that happened. Um, so that was the first time. That was my first ex direct experience with these beings, with, with these creatures. That was not the only experience that we've had um, because it does, it, there's this weird thing that occurs, right? Where once you have an experience, it's almost like you're tagged. And so um, further off in our travels, we, um, pandemic starts um, of March, 2020, right? Um, my birthday's at the end of March, it's a few weeks. Um, well, I love hiking. Utah is one of the best states in the entire union for hiking. We have everything here. One of my favorite aspects of Utah is the Red Rock. I love the, I love the desert. Um, down in southeastern Utah, we have all the old Indian dwellings and that. And down in Bears Ears, and we get permits to hike what's called Moon House. And it's a um, this is a it's not necessarily an, at the time Bears Ears was closed because it was a federally controlled property, but Moon House was state. I do believe it's state. And so we were able to get permits to hike. They only allow about, um, they only allow anywhere between 10 to 20 people to hike there a day. But we get down there, there's nobody down there. Especially since what COVID was doing, I don't know if I can say COVID, but it, what COVID was doing to the, um, the, the Native American population down there, it was really bad. This is very near the Four Corners. So there's not one soul we're, we're basically alone in this beautiful place, right? Um, so we, we get down to Muley Point, and it's, it's down by the Valley of the Gods. And we're literally camping on the edge of the Valley of the Gods. And you've got Monument Valley in the, in the distance. And it's something out of, out of a Western movie that's beautiful. But we have this entire area. So we've got our reservation for Moon House. And so that morning, we wake up, and we, 
like literally when you drive to Moon House Ruins, you're driving in through the door, through you know the back country. It's 10, 15 miles on dirt roads in the back country. Then you park, and then you hike into this this valley, this massive. It's almost like um, it's it, like two mesas, and then a massive valley that had been carved out over time. And the um, the indigenous people had built their ruins, their their houses in that in the cliff. Um, beautiful, awesome. The hike was amazing. It was, I mean, it's one of the ones where, you know, people from all over the world would love to do this, right? It's my backyard. I love Utah. Um, so we we get done we get done exploring the the ruins. Have an amazing time. It's just myself, my wife, and my best friend and his his oldest son who's 18. Um, and we, of course, us being a little bit weird, we decide we want to explore because when we when we're in an area we really explore the area i mean we we go through it with a fine-tooth comb you know we want to experience all that we want to see we want to we want to be in that situation we want to try to put ourselves what those people how they felt the peace and the beauty um this is may may let me let me go back and say that so this is early may um and uh we were exploring down in the wash and the the flood the floods had come in because off the runoff and, and that, and then they had receded. There were still areas of the, of the creek that was, that was wet, and the sand itself was still wet as well in some parts. And so we sneak off into, we go into a little hollow, and we did an Estes, an Estes method session there. Have a great experience doing that. There was a whole other story with that. Um, but then we continued to explore. I'm, we're down in the creek bed, and we're getting we're further back in in, in the canyon, where mo where most people wouldn't even go. They, there's no way people wouldn't they wouldn't go here. Well, I I um, I'm hiking. And I look down and I see a massive print, and it's a perfect footprint. And I I call over <laughs> my my wife and my my best friend Sean. They get annoyed with me because no matter what happens somehow something something is going to happen if we're out in the woods or if we're at a place something's going to happen and it's my fault usually and so <laughs> i called out and i said i'm like guys i know this is going to make you guys annoyed but i'm like come here and look at this right and um i put my foot next to this thing i'm a size 13 this thing has me by inches and it's a perfect i mean this is clearly what it is right um either rudy gobert had been walking around, hiking around barefoot, right? Or, so, but what we decide is, um, we decide we're gonna follow this back. When we're gonna, we're gonna, cause now, now I need to know what the heck happened, right? So we, it's, um, it, the, the foliage and the, it, there's a bramble and thicket like right in front of us. And this, like my buddy Sean, six foot five, six foot six, and those weeds and that were taller than him. But he, he does the, he goes into the thorny bushes looking for a sign, right? No sign at that and down there, but we continued to follow the wash, continue to follow the canyon down. And eventually we get to the end of the, at the end of the canyon. I actually have pictures of all this too, I can send you. Um, we get to the end and there's a wall and it, the water, like there was a wall that comes into like a, like the dead end, but there's a, a beautiful canyon wall. And at the, on the bottom of the wall on the ground is a pool. Um, and it was it, it, what it literally looked like the Sasquatch got in the pool and there were footprints all over the mud. We could literally see where the, where they, where the Sasquatch, the handprints went in and pulled itself up. So as it was getting out of the water. Um, so that was the second, that was the second experience. Um, the, the next experience was in that, uh, after a trip that we had taken to uh, Mount Shasta, um, and this was up in the high winters of, of northeastern Utah. It was probably July or August. And um, we, at the time, it was an impromptu camping trip. And we had our, we had our, our young, three youngest kids. Um, and they're, you know, they're all about junior high age at that time. But we decided, heck, we're gonna go, what we wanna do is we, we wanna go and just go up into the Uintas and get a spot. Well, you know, as, as well as I do during the pandemic, everybody and their dog was camping because that's what you could do, right? So, and this was a Friday after work. And so we leave about four o'clock 
in the afternoon. It's not that far of a drive for us. It's probably an hour and a half, two hours. We get the trailer, we load it up. But everybody and their dog is out in the woods. So we're going further and further back into the high Uintas. We pass where locally there's a lake called um, Mirror Lake up there. And that's pretty far into the Uintas. We're almost to the Wyoming side of the border. But uh, we, d we see a dirt road and it's starting to get dark. Um, but this is July, August, so this is about 9, 9.30. So we turn up this dirt road. Again, we go back, we, on this, there were people everywhere. So we drove probably for a good 30, 40 minutes on this dirt road trying to find a spot where we could camp. It's pitch black now. Um, and I see a little turn off. There's a few people with trailers and fifth wheels in this, this area, but it's, it's an open glade. There's a few like pines, big taller pines, but it's, it's open and it's a spot where we can pull off and we can easily get into, the, into, um, into a spot. We could create a spot. So I did that because it's 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. It's late. We're all ready to be done. We need to set up camp, you know. And so we set up camp and everybody goes to bed. The kids sleep in the truck. My wife and I stay in the trailer. You know, in the morning, I'm used to getting up very early because I work. Most of the time, I'm usually up around 4, 35 o'clock in the morning. And so I do my thing where I get up and um, it, the sun's starting to rise. It's pretty, you know. I, I sit by our makeshift fire pit and I, I didn't light a fire at the time because it was pretty quiet. So I'm just sitting there kind of enjoying a bit of a meditative state. And as the sun comes, I, the sun comes up. I can see they're like not too far away from our spot, which I kind of fairly open with a few pines there, is a, is a forest. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna go, hot dang, I'm gonna go exploring. And so um, I head towards the woods and head towards the trees. And now I, I understand that, you know, we, we have, this is Utah, we have snow on like any on the planet, right? So naturally there's gonna be weather and deadfall that happens. But I start noticing these very complex structures throughout the woods. And these are extremely threaded, weird, not just root balls hanging, like this is weird stuff. And in my back of my head, I'm like, not again, right? Not again, really? Like really? I'm telling you, my wife and my husband, or my wife and my husband, my wife and my best friend, they get annoyed. They, because this, this occurs like with us all the time. And so, Ultimately, I'm like, no, this is just this is just weather. This is just deadfall. This isn't anything. But I'm hiking around exploring, and sure enough, I look down and there's a massive print, another massive track, and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Now, my youngest, my youngest daughter, and my and my young my stepson, who's who's um, young, the youngest kids, they were with us during that time at Eseti. So the fear of what had occurred is still in them. So, but they're camping with us. They remember that. It wasn't. Too, it was only a couple of years after. But um, they're, you know, they were. Now they're teenagers now. But but my one of my daughters is kind of. She's extremely afraid. She's very curious, but she's afraid because she was the one that woke up in the middle of the night just shaking like a leaf at East City. And so I didn't want to tell them. I didn't want to go back and be like, Dad did it again, right? Like I brought you to a place out of randomly nowhere where. There's, you know, there's weird phenomenon occurring. And so, but at the time, like I came back, they were still asleep, but my youngest, my youngest son, my stepson, my youngest son, he was, he was awake. I'm like, hey, Tristan, come with me. And so we go hiking around and he, <laughs> it didn't take him that long. He's, and he, he looks down because we're, there's prints everywhere. <laughs> there's tracks everywhere. And he literally looks down and he finds a jute, like a baby print. It's, and this thing, like, he has small feet, he's, he's a short kid. He's got tiny feet and he was still kind of a teenager growing into his body and that, but it was awesome. He's like, Michael, do we have Sasquatch here again? I'm like, yes, Tristan, I'm sorry. He's like, he, he does it, he rolls his eyes, right? I'm like, I'm sorry, Tristan, I didn't know this was gonna happen, you know? I'm like, do not do not tell the other kids. Like, don't tell. So we, we, start, we start exploring around because there's structures, there's X's, there's, you know, teepees. Um, I find I come across again I don't know how to how to how to phrase this the right way but there was a stump and it almost looked like an altar and it was beautiful it was 
gorgeous. And in the middle of the in the middle of this stump, it, it was kind of hollowed out, so it was kind of like a bowl. And in, in the middle of this in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the stump in the altar is this rock. I've never seen a rock like this before in my life. This thing was like rainbow colored, and it had this streak of white running through the middle of it. it almost looked like a yin yang in some ways. And in my head, I get this impression that this is for you. Right? But I didn't take it. The reason why is I thought, okay, at, at this point, I need to, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna get I'm gonna get my wife and I'm gonna get the other kids who are gonna come and explore. I'll remember where this is. Right. So we went back and I, you know, I said, hey guys, help me here. You know, I'm like, forgive me, but I want to show you something really cool. And we come, come back to the spot. I couldn't find that. I couldn't find it again. I couldn't, I, no matter, I looked and looked and looked. It was like something, it was like I, I passed into another realm during that time. And this beautiful, almost like an altar was there with a gift for me. And I didn't take it. And I like, I completely regret it. And now at the time, because looking back, like that would have been, I, I have a lot of, of, uh, of trinkets and tokens from my adventures, that would have been probably my prized possession, to be honest with you. Um, because I knew what that was. I had that impression that that was for me. And, and I felt like when I went back, I kind of felt like maybe I offended them in not taking it. Um, but there was a consolation prize. And so they, the, the, my youngest, who at the when she was little and the one who was shaken, um, she she she's a little bit older now. She's a little bit more engaged, you know, and uh, she finds this trackway, and it and it's awesome. This is like literally you can see the toes, right? And you can see the toes. And what what drew her eye to this is again another really bizarre rock, and it's sitting like literally the rock. It's about that big and it's sitting where the where the big toe is and this rock is multicolored and it has purples and blues and greens and that's what drew her eye but then she's like dad come here take a look at this and perfect I mean absolutely you can see detail in that like it's it's insane we, we found like we explored the whole area again another trackway it was it was a, it was a part of a trackway um, so that place that place now when we left I'm gonna be honest I stuck a geo, uh, uh, with my um, GPS, I stuck a pin there. And uh, after watching your second documentary, the, um, the Paranormal Sasquatch, I, I stuck a pin and I kept that, I kept the location. I, I talked, I, I, after a lot of deliberation, I, I decided that this was gonna be my habituation spot. Because I feel like, in my heart, like I feel like that, like out of random, out of, all the places we'd gone, you know, all the places we could have gone that night, we ended up there. We ended up at that place. We ended, we ended up find. I happened to hike in these in this specific area. I happened to find tracks. I hope I happened to find all these structures, and there was something that was offered to me. And so I've made the, this earlier in the year after seeing your documentary. I made the, the decision that as as soon as the snows recede in that, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and. I'm going to make that my habituation area. Kind of do a, a little bit of some experiments and, and go out there and that. But you know, keep it, keep. It, um, I don't. I want to use the term professional, but um, you know, make sure that it, it's not something that is taken lightly. And I, I want to see if it, I want to see if one, if they're still there, and then two, if I can actually build a relationship with them. It's tricky, right? Because when you look at different aspects of phenomenon. Right? When you look at different aspects of what people consider paranormal or what they supernatural, when you really, when you really look at these things and you, not only do you look at it, but you start to go and experience these things, you start to have direct experiences with these different phenomena. You know, I've spent almost 20 years of my life chasing this um, in diff all over the country, literally all over the country now. Um, I've been to places that are that most people, grown people wouldn't they wouldn't even dare go, they 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 would they would be too scared. 
but when you start to see how everything does tie together, there's specific parts of, now I know this is controversial in the, in the Sasquatch community, I, and this is kind of why the reason why this is the first time I've ever really spoke about these sorts of things, is because there is that division and there is that a little bit of tension, right? You've got, um, but once you start at exploring, really exploring the, the aspects of the Sasquatch phenomenon and you're open to what people are saying, right? You're open to people that you, when they start seeing orbs and then they see these, these beings, right? You, you start, to, when, they, when they have eye shine that is self-illuminating, that's changing colors, right? When, they, when mind speak happens, like I, I hesitate to even say the word mind speak for me because it wasn't, it was more of an impression than anything else. It wasn't like I heard words in my head. When people describe that, they describe words. That wasn't their own voice. And for me, it was different. So do I, is mine any less of an experience that because it wasn't words, it was more of an impression or an image, you know? And you start to, when you look at the UFO phenomenon and you look at the experiencer phenomenon and you see that what they're experiencing here with the ports, they're experiencing here with Sasquatch. They're experiencing the same thing. And you start to see a common thread that runs through all of it. It does coalesce. It, it, it does become related in some way, shape, or form. As much as, as some people don't want to look at that, that's the truth. And that, that's the thing. That's, that is a common theme, whether we want to believe it or not. And so, yes, there is that, there is that cohesion for whatever it is how, and however it's linked. I have no idea, no clue, but it is linked, for sure. Let me give an example of how that, that thread, okay? Um, before Skinwalk was super popular, and right before the, the, uh, the acquisition by, um, what's it, Brandon Fugel from Robert Bigelow, during that time, my wife and I, we were, <laughs> again, it was the beginning of our relationship, and. This is this was her introduction into the like I'm going to take you to Skinwalker Ranch, honey. This is like this is how I'm going to introduce you to the phenomenon, right? Um, and so Brian Skinner had a website, and it was like Skinwalker.net or whatever. And at the time, I had a podcast, and our Skinwalker special was the most popular episode that we ever had. Um, so I take we we decide we're going to go down to we're going to go. Um, fishing down in Strawberry and go swimming and fishing down in Strawberry Reservoir, which is about 30, 40 minutes away from um, Fort Duchesne where Skimwalker is. Um, we get down, we get to Skimwalker, and there used to be a public viewing, legal public viewing area that you could, you could, you could basically stay and not get harassed by, you know, by the law or anything like that. You want to be discreet because you don't, you don't want, you don't want attention, but, um, so that night we set up we set up a vigil, and um, essentially all we had at the time we had our van backed up with the with the tailgate up, and we had two two chairs. Um, and so we we did our all night vigil. Well, I'll tell you this much: the stuff that 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 we experienced there is the same kind. I heard the same kind of scream and holler at Skinwalker in the middle of the night that I heard in Trout Lake, Washington. Like the same exact like. With a little bit of a twist, this sounded like a woman was 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 being brutalized to within an inch of her life out of nowhere. The same, the the footprints, like the sounds, like all of it matched. That's and it, it coalesces. It, it you know, and with the, with Skinwalker at that time, my wife is experiencing certain aspects that she she's describing. What sound? What if you add it all up? It's it's a Sasquatch. I'm describing something else over here, right? So I'm having a completely different experience over here at Skinwalker. She's more focused on Skinwalkers, like it, like a like an all-you-can-eat buffet. That's especially when it's really active. It's like it's happening all at one time. And I I could go off. We could have a four-hour conversation about this alone. The phenomenon there was was un, unbelievable. I was more focused on the orb activity. And the the uh, the um, the lights and the phenomenon there, or the voices that sound like the voices from Lost that we're having conversations all around us, that like that that we both finally like came clean and said we were hearing. And then you go and you 
research other people's experiences there and they have that same thing. There was one thing that happened that I, that I don't really talk about too much, but um, wh who was the physicist? The you, Eric Bard, right? Okay, he, the first episode of Skimwalker, he, he, how do I say this? I'm getting excited now, so don't, please excuse my stuttering. But he describes an experience exactly what I had there. And it, where I was sitting, my wife, it, my wife had had enough. So she was in the van sleeping, like trying to sleep, right? And I was sitting alone in the dark on a, on a chair. And I looked over in the darkness and there were two red eyes hovering in the air, standing at, like staring at me. And I thought, I'm tired. I, I'm seeing things. I look over, and it's still staring at me. And I, I kind of, I kind of, it disappears, right? So I kind of dismiss it. Um, then a, a little bit after that, I'm, I got in the van. I was laying down. I had the door open. And we, the area that we were on, the base is like gravel in a way. It's a mix of gravel and, and sand. And I don't know if you own a dog or if you've ever been around a dog, but, but when they're on that type of, you can, the sound of their pad feet is very, especially when it's running, right? It's very distinct. Well, I'm out there listening. I'm out there looking, doing the thing. And all of a sudden I hear the sound of pad feet run up right next, run up to me. Nothing there run up to me and it and in my ear it, it goes <sighs> that I was done D like I was done I, I woke my wife up I'm like we're leaving let's go I'm done between the eyes and then that experience there was nothing there but I know what the hell I heard and I know what was in my part of my French I'm sorry I know what was in my ear now Eric Bard during I'll tie this back around okay during the first episode of on the History Channel, he describes the exact same experience with the red eyes that I had that night. He described it in that ep episode, and that like when I, when we were watching that, and he described that, both my wife and I, every hair on end stood up, every hair, and that's not. I mean, it's really distinctive, right? It's it's different. Well, but again, you want to tie that back to people see the they see the the red illuminated eyes. They see that all the time. When you look at like. I don't know if this is, pro but the dogman phenomenon, they see the orange illuminated eyes. In Pennsylvania, um, they, see, they see different colors of illuminated eyes. They'll see the blue, they'll see the green, they'll see the red, right? Um, in Texas, they'll see the red. I mean, they, all these different, and, but it all matches up. It all correlates in one way, shape, or form. The predator effect, right? I didn't see the shimmer, but the, whatever was there was there physically but I couldn't see it. I couldn't see the actual being itself. Um, so that, that jumps out to me in, in a lot of ways, how, how that, that does line up. I think, I think if, the, if an individual wants to have these experiences and if they are really interested in looking into, into to going and finding for themselves, and I think that's the most important aspect of this, is going for direct experience and having making your own decision, your own, your own, making your mind up based upon what you experience. Um, it's, if, if that's what you're looking for, I think it's essential that, and I know this is going to sound a little bit hippie-ish or woo-ish, but make sure you have a good heart. Um, make sure that, that you, that you honestly have, you honestly have love in your heart. Make sure that when you're going out there, you're not putting yourself, of course, you want to be smart physically. You're not going to put yourself in a situation where you're, you're in over your head or you're going to get lost in the woods or you're going to get eaten by a bear, right? That's not what you want to do. You're going to get bitten by a, a, a rattlesnake and then you're stranded. Don't do that, right? But if honestly, on, on an emotional, spiritual um, level, mental level, you need to, you, I, I do believe that your heart well, if you have a good heart, you have no expectations whatsoever. You go out there just to have the experience, to see what happens. And then more often or not, as, and you put yourself in a position where, see, I've had these experiences because I've sought it out. I've gone to these places. I've spent out hundreds, hundreds of hours in the dark. Um, so I've put myself in a position where if, if there's going to be an experience, I'm going to have it. 
right? Now, not everybody can do that, but but even at your own home, if you know, I I've done experiments at, at, at my home where I'll where I'll meditate. Where what I'll do is I'll turn on a a digital recorder, and I'll I'll have it playing, but I'll meditate for 35, 40 minutes, and I'll stop the meditation and I'll go back and I'll listen to the to the recorder. And there's there's people talking about me on that recording about me specifically reacting to my like about my meditation there's nobody there like what in the heck right you can have these these experiences you 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 don't need to necessarily go out in the woods or go to a go to a place you can you can create the environment for yourself but just make sure that you you know that your heart is pure you're doing this with a good intent and and your expectations are a little bit tempered so that way if there is something out there that wants to communicate that wants to to come through to to uh, contact you you're you're really prepared to do so